So the wall across from us is in situ. In situ. And the wall on the on the west side here, and then the stuff that's over the edge. Okay, so. So in situ. So it's not been dumped or parked. That's right. Okay, cool. Now that pile down over there, you see, you see it. Yeah, yeah. Past the edge. Yeah. That is a dump pile. That is a dump pile. Right. So all right, it doesn't have that rocky. Right, you don't have the rocky cap. So yeah. what you've got is at the base yeah. is the juniper hill, which is what they were actually going for for the clay. That's oh, okay. high clay content. High and clay. So what did they use the clay for? Like uh, uh, Drain brick. tiles. Drain tiles, okay. And bricks. And bricks, so that. So they had to remove the overburden to get down to the, right. uh, the actual clay. And then when you get up toward the top, about halfway up and toward the top, is the Cerro Gordo layer, and that's more limey. Okay. And it that's where a lot of your fossils are coming from, the Cerro Gordo. So Cerro Gordo, right below the, the kind of rock cap? Right. Well, the rock cap is the Cerro Gordo. Oh, okay. And, and down, probably about halfway down. Okay. You can sort of see the difference over here on this side. Okay. The tanner okay. is the Cerro Gordo. The grayer okay. is the Juniper Hill. Okay, so next question. Juniper Hill and the uh, clay layer are known for fossils or not? Not as many. Okay. There's still fossils in it, but not as many. So is that so that's uh, marine material? It's all marine material. All right. Yep. Okay, yep. cool. Yep. Thank you. All dump pile. Straight ahead is dump pile. And also where those people are walking, all okay. of that is an old dump pile. There's okay. a lot of fossils in it. It's all the over, in the Cerro Gordo overburden. Okay, that's got removed for to yep. mine the clay. So yeah, now I mean in situ fossils, not a big deal because we know relatively about where it should have been from. So. Yep, 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 yep. So what's the? Is that just algae in the water over there, or is that? Uh, yeah, that's LG or just the water's that clear. I'm not quite sure which. Okay. I have okay. To get over, over there. Okay. Because here the water is clear. For the most part, you're looking down into. Okay. The base green of the clay. And base. Yeah. So I assume when this was active, they obviously had to pump water. When they were uh, active. yeah. Well, it would drain out. Uh, oh, drain. okay. Oh, yeah. So they just set it up to have it. Yeah. Natural yeah. Drain. yeah. So here's us walking into the base of the quarry. Somewhat uh, hazardous. Yes, there's a lot of loose stuff and when it's dry like this you gotta be careful or you'll slip. So this is one of the few uh, sites, fossil sites where you can be pretty picky about your uh, specimens. You'll have a lot of choices. And what you want to drag back is the uh, the dilemma you'll have. It's like it could, you know, just partial bracts. I could have like a half dozen in less than a minute. Uh, we're in coral right here in front of me. Flawless specimen here. Definitely going into my uh, collection. So more or less a uh, pachyphylum in situ. So it's a it's a horn coral or it's a coral, I should say. Colonial coral. Co yeah. Colonial coral. So where you see the craters is probably the surface. I get a little uh, cross section here of the actual coral. So all right, cool. Thank you. I'm heading up the ravine here, and I, this looks like a flawless brachiopod, nice and dimensional. It's going into my bag. Yeah. So you can get pretty choosy in this uh, particular uh, rock quarry for animals. Another one right here. Let's check for damages. Yeah, it's kind of got side damage, but I might go ahead and my first pachyophyllum. Colonial coral. Um, 
mostly buried in matrix, but it looks like that's the base right there. You see some uh, coral coming out of the base. Cool. Found one. Yay for me. So this is the actual clay layer that they're mining to make their drain tiles pretty devoid of anything sizable. There's fossils in there and they're pretty small. Maybe conodont teeth or something like that. Some monarchs out in the uh, field here. I wish I knew my prairie flowers. I don't. Yeah, I don't know them all either. So. So it looks like the remains of their some of their kilns here. Yeah, it probably is based on what it looks like. Yeah, so drain tile, which is what they're making. Stuff that was broken in the process. Yep. They didn't haul it anywhere. It looks like there's... Looks like... You think these bricks are fired here too or not? The bricks, I think, made because they're mortared, they're probably part of the kiln. So that looks definitely like a uh, kiln brick. Well, this stuff is all broken tile. Yeah. And that other piece is probably just a, it's got coloration from the that's cement. cement that just got natural. So this is so this is what the actual tile looks like after it's been fired. Yep. So that's all that clay layer we're looking at at the bottom of the quarry floor. Yep. Turns orange. Turns orange. Looks like anything it's in contact with turns orange after a while, like the concrete. Cool. Lots of it. So we're walking towards some of the remaining kilns that they fired their tile in. It's actually, I'm surprised, they're in pretty good shape. Yeah. So when was this? Probably 1970s when this... Well, it was definitely, they were still in operation in the late 70s. So... It may tell you down here. Alright, cool. Well, it looks like a nice temporary shelter if you can crawl under that fence. Keep you out of the rain. Brick floor, brick walls, brick ceiling in their kiln. So I had to put up with a couple thousand degrees. Looks like the floor is somewhat uneven. I wonder if that's purposeful or if that's just, that could be just aging. aging. So this is, has no uh, steel shell on the outside. Pretty amazing. They don't believe in graffiti down here in Iowa. <laughs> this were anywhere near St. Paul or Minneapolis, there'd be graffiti everywhere. Yeah. So, all right, let's spin around the back and then we'll head out. Oh, some old, uh, looks like some old equipment here. Yeah, that's probably actually still used. Quick pan from the other side of the uh, quarry here. So that wall over there is natural wall, most of it. Then right, probably underneath that windmill is a uh, dump pile. What I'm standing on is dump pile. Both good for fossil collecting, in situ, bedrock. 
uh, soil and dump piles. Indoor picnic benches or pavilion. Pretty nice park. Way underused, looks like, for the amount of stuff they got in here. My partner Steve's heading to the base of the quarry here. This is dump pile, right? Yep. Dump pile, but... Okay. Stuff. There is fossils in the dump pile as well as the natural exposures. Well, not I guess they're not natural exposures, but the. Uh... So it seems to be Steve's lucky day. What's this number? Number five. On oh, another little uh, pachyphylum. I kind of like it, so that'll be the day so this is a colonial coral. Clean it up with this little uh, stream here, see if it anything else. <laughs> oh, well, it cleans up. I'll put a little more work into it. Nice. So Steve found a nice big horn coral. All right. So fishing's your thing. It looks like this lake is stocked. We've got a fishing dock over there at the kiln corner of the uh, quarry here. So this. Park has modern bathroom facilities, running water, flushing toilets, urinals, tall dispensers, soap, toilet paper. Steve making his attempt at capturing some microfossils, which we separate out of the matrix later and search for. The extraction is the key to these, finding these microfossils.